Well, first of all, uh, in my speech today, I mentioned uh, the, the metaphor of the Nipissing graduate as advocate because I think teachers can be excellent grad, uh, advocates for their students. I said they need to advocate about public education. They need to advocate around an inclusive, building an inclusive school, an inclusive society, and character development. And the reasons for these, in terms of public education, I think we owe it to parents, as teachers, to give a literacy guarantee in terms of the future of these individuals and of our society. Literacy contributes to empowerment. Because of that, I encourage the graduates to help to stamp out illiteracy in Canada. Our country is changing dramatically in terms of diversity. That diversity is reflected in our schools. It means that teachers today then must know how to embrace diversity, manage diversity well, make sure their schools become laboratories of what effective human relationships could look like. And then the third area I asked Nipissing graduates to focus on in terms of advocacy is for character development. Character and citizenship are intertwined. It matters who our neighbors are. It matters if something happens, people will, 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 will help one another. In other words, we educate the heads as well as the hearts. And character development is about inculcating those qualities upon which we can find common ground, regardless of race, or gender, or social class, or religion. This is a time in Ontario, with our diversity, for us to find common ground on the values we hold in common. And those values can be taught and reinforced and modeled in our schools. So graduates today are going to touch thousands of children in their time in schools. I encourage them to recognize how powerful the influence is and how it ramifies to the health and well-being of our country. What an awesome responsibility, but what a privilege. Those who are just starting out, I think carefully about the careers you choose. Uh, choose the things that you love in which you can implement your values because when you're doing a job in which you're connected to the values of that profession it has an impact on your job satisfaction and on your productivity so don't just do things that others want you to do ask yourself how do I want to implement my skills in life and choose that occupation I hope it's teaching for many, because there's no profession that contributes to all other, other professions as much as teaching, uh, teaching does. But for those who are entering teaching, I would say the first two years are going to be challenging. It's not easy. You must get through those first two years, and then the world opens up in a way that one does not fully imagine. So s stick to it, learn from one another, be mentors, be mentored and uh, recognize that you're never alone in this profession. Seek help. Do not just close your classroom and, and try to privatize your little classroom, but recognize that the more you open up your classrooms to the world, literally, the better you're going to be as a teacher. It means a lot to me because I have three degrees and I've never been to a graduation. So on the one hand, it felt like going to a graduation. Number two, Nipissing is just one of the best universities in the world. The Faculty of Education, because I'm an educator, is so important that I'm getting a degree from the faculty. So from a university I love, from a faculty that touches my personal passion, which is teaching, I think this is just one of the highlights of my career. And I'm so grateful to Nipissing for this honor. Oh, there are so many challenges. Um, students talk about you know, things like tuition fees, equity of access are important. How do we make sure that as many Ontarians as possible can get into universities? And, and I'm so happy that the Premier, uh, they have done a lot in terms of uh, funding, OSAP and so on. A lot is being done to help those who want to, to get onto university. But we must make sure we do not only help them initially, because people need, in addition to financial supports, they need mentorship as well. 
I want to see more of our children from uh, um, challenging circumstances getting into the university. Many of our ethnocultural communities, many of our children who are poor. I was just so delighted with Nipissing's program for First Nations teachers, which is unique. Uh, in Canada because we need teachers who are going to go into First Nations communities who can help with achievement in those areas. We need teachers from ethnocultural backgrounds. So I'd say more and more places have been opened up in Ontario. I think we're on the right track. We can always do more in terms of providing the supports for students to help them. But I personally feel that, that uh, Premier McGuinty is very much aware of some of these issues and they're doing their part in addressing them. I, I can see that firsthand. I see first-born kids, so first-generation students who have not been to university before who are availing themselves of, of some of the supports that there are. So um, uh, we need to get some of those individuals who have dropped out of school. And, uh, secondary schools. It's not that they're not bright. Some of our brightest kids. Now that the dropout rate is dwindling, we need to get more of those people into university, maybe through a mature student route, because they don't want to go back to school. But how do we get those who are really bright, who may have life experiences, into universities? Uh, I think that's going to be a challenge for us in the future. And we, th we think more and more universities need to have innovative programs to capture some of the people in the workforce. How do we get them into their programs? Distance education programs. And I know you're expand, expanding in very creative ways, but people can't always come to an area. But how do we make sure they can take their degrees from home? Those are some of the, the, the areas for innovation in the future.